Hallelujah. Everybody got that island on the Fantasy, a fantasy, Satan lose. It is a fantasy, a fantasy, Satan lose. Jesus says, the win the man, the win the man, the win the man. Jesus says, Hallelujah. The win the man, the win the man, the win the man. Jesus is the winner man, the winner man all the time. Stop, Tom. Stop. Now, some of you are trying real hard. Okay, but you've got, you've got to get that island attitude, you know? Everybody say, Jesus is. Jesus says. The winner man. The winner man. No, not the winner man. Hallelujah. Not, you know. One Jesus minute. is the winner man. Jesus is. The winner man. Jesus says, the winner man. Right, Hallelujah. Good morning, Michelle. We're singing, Jesus is the winner man. Satan lose. It is a fantasy, a fantasy, yeah. Satan lose. Jesus is the winner man, the winner man, the winner man. Jesus is the winner man, the winner man all the time. I am on the winner side, the winner side, the winner side. I am on the winner side, the winner side all the time. Good morning, Michelle. Satan lose. In a manger, Satan lose again, lose again. Yeah, it is a fantasy, a fantasy. Satan lose, it is a fantasy, a fantasy. Satan lose, yeah, Jesus is the winner man, the winner man, the winner man. Jesus is the winner man, the winner man all the time. Satan lose. Satan Satan lose again. Was born again. Yes, it is a fantasy, a fantasy. Satan lose. It is a fantasy, a fantasy. Satan lose. Yeah, Jesus is the winner man, the winner man, the winner man. Jesus is the winner man, the winner man all the time. The winner man, the winner man, the winner man, the winner man. Yeah, Jesus is the winner man, the winner man all the time. The winner. The winner man, yes, he's the winner man, the winner man. Jesus is the winner man, the winner man all the time. The winner, the winner, the winner, the winner. Jesus is the winner man, the winner man all the time. He's the winner, the winner, the winner, the winner. Jesus is the winner man, the winner man all the time. Fantasy, such a fantasy. Satan lose, it is a fantasy, a fantasy. Satan lose, hallelujah, glory to God. We bless the Lord. Today is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice, and I rejoice because you know what? 
Today, the God is good. I am 54 years old, and so I celebrate the goodness of God. The enemy tried to kill me so many times, but I say it's a fun to see Satan lose. Hallelujah. God is good. Father, we bless your name. We praise you. We exalt you. This is the day that you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it because, God, you are with strength and power. You've made our way perfect. We thank you, Father. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Many are the plans. The enemy had many plans for your children. He had many plans for me, Lord. But 54 years old, 54 years ago, you birthed me into this world for a purpose. And when the enemy tried to take me out, you said, oh no, my daughter is here for a purpose and she will not leave this earth until she accomplished her purpose. And so today, I thank you, God. I thank you for your healing power. When the enemy tried to kill me, you said, no, not my child. So today, I thank you for life. I thank you for life, not only the physical life, but for abundant life that I know you as my Lord and Savior. So Lord, everything today i give you thanks i give you all the praise you take all the honor and glory because it's in you that i live and move and have our being we praise you lord we say thank you thank you jesus thank you for loving us thank you for loving us and even as our children go out today lord we thank you that they are covered by the blood of jesus no evil will befall them no plague will come near their dwelling because god has given his angels charge over them so we bless your name we praise you we exhort you father even as the adults also go out father we thank you that our we are covered by your blood we thank you also that your, your promises to us that the angels of the lord encamp it round about those that love and fear you and we decree and declare that this day we will have a great day so we give you all the praise honor and glory in jesus name amen the voice of the lord is powerful the voice of the lord is full of majesty the voice of the lord breaks the cedars yes god spoke and broke the cedars of lebanon and everything that the enemy is bringing in your life today anything that he's bringing in your life it is utterly destroyed because god has spoken he has a plan and a purpose for your life and you will accomplish the will and plan for god that god has for your life as you walk in obedience as you choose it's a choice that god has given us and so god has given us the strength today let us rejoice because our steps are ordered by god thank you father so when you came on or when you listen to and on you'll hear that song that's one of my favorite songs jesus is the winner man and i sing that song because it's a testimony as i said today i'm celebrating my 54th birthday and i give god all the praise you know years ago the enemy tried to kill me but i rejoice because i know my steps are ordered by god so jesus is the winner man let's say that jesus is the winner man so whatever situation you may be going through today whatever but it's a financial situation whatever situation remember you are a winner because jesus is the winner man you win in every situation one thing i forgot to mention yesterday when we were talking about finances and we spoke about being in need and in lack and i said if you're in lack um there is some um as a child of god check your life but there are times this is what i mentioned there are times when we're doing everything we're tithing we're giving we're walking in obedience and we are under an attack from the enemy we are under, thank you, Michelle. Thank you, God bless you too. We are under an attack from the enemy. So when we notice, when we check our lives, we see our finances, something is going wrong. We know we're tired as we know we're givers. Then what we do, we get into the word and we start confessing the word over that situation. You said, Lord, you said you will rebuke the devourer. And this, based upon what I'm doing, I know I've been hiding, I've been giving everything in my life. And so you use the word of God and you speak to the enemy. You will take your hands off my finances in the name of Jesus. You use the word because sometimes as children of God, the enemy try to attack us, attack our finances, even though we're doing everything. But we know the word of God. That's when we pull out the word of God and we use it. We confess the word. All right, so our confession for the children today is found in Proverbs chapter 2, verse 1. And it says, I will listen to God and treasure his commands. Again, I will listen to God and treasure his commands. So, as we said yesterday, we want wisdom. You will seek after wisdom. Listen to the word of God. You spend time in reading. If you're little and you can't read, your parents may tell you the word, give you instructions, simple things like obeying your parents, honor your father and your mother, that it may be well with you. Those are the commands of God. So you listen to God because you want to be wise. You want to walk in wisdom as we confessed yesterday. So we will listen to the word of God. And 
we will treasure. To treasure something, you take care of it. You, you don't just throw it aside. You see it as something special. So whatever God is telling us in his word to do, like honor your parents, you treasure that. Why? Because it would be well with you, the word says, and you would live long on the earth. So again, our confession for the children, I will listen to God and treasure his commands. The confession for us adults today is found in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. I will seek God's kingdom and his righteousness first, and everything that I need will be given to me. I will first seek God's kingdom and his righteousness, and everything I need will be given to me. Well, as we work, we will not try to accumulate for ourselves and forget about God, but we honor God first. What does God want me to do with my life? First, you seek God. You seek his kingdom. Make your life right with God. You seek to do things that the Lord wants you to do. And then everything will be added unto you as you honor God, as you seek him, as you put him first in your life. All right, so we continue to, to, to talk today. Read from, we're reading from the book, God's Creative Power by Charles Caps, And we are at God Wants to Be Involved in Your Finances. That's where we are today. All right, I'm going to read the last paragraph from yesterday and then we'll flow in today. From the book of Genesis to the words of Jesus and the warnings of Paul, we see proof that God does indeed want to be involved in our finances. Oh, let me go back to that paragraph. And beware, this is found in Deuteronomy 8, 17 and 18. Beware lest you say in your mind and heart, my power and the mind of my hand have gotten me this wealth. But you shall earnestly remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swore to your fathers, as it is this day. From the book of Genesis, to the words of Jesus and the writings of Paul, we see proof that God does indeed want to be involved in our finances. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Matthew 6, 30, 33. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in good health, even as thy soul prospereth. John 3, sorry, 3rd John 2. Again, beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in good health, even as thy soul prospereth. I read this verse from years ago and, 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 and it, it gave me a new meaning. I mean, sometimes we read it and we don't really understand what it says. I remember one day while I was fighting lupus, I just, after my children left for school, I just sat, lie, lay on the floor in my stomach. I put on the worship music and I was just in God's presence. I was there for almost all day. I just felt like worshiping God. I was there just soaking in his presence and listening to what and praising God. And I got up around, was, I think it was a quarter to three to get the door open for my children. And I got up from that floor and it was amazing, my body, I felt so energized. Uh, most of the pain was gone. And, and there was like, wow. And I said, wow. And the Lord says, he said, remember that verse? I wish above all things you will prosper and be in good health. He said, while you, were, while you were praising me on the floor, while you were worshiping me, your soul was prospering. And so as your soul prospers, even so you will prosper in your health. Even so you will prosper in your finances. That's why you find that you, when you get up, you find you felt better. The pain eased in your body because your soul was prospering. So the verse, beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in good health. Even as your soul prospereth. It's a condition. It's conditional. So as we prosper in our souls, everything else will come in line. Hallelujah. Mm, as we prosper in our souls. And then there are the times, as I said, when we are under attack. That's different. But on a whole, when we prosper, prospering is being in God's presence, spending time reading his words, getting that close connection with him. Our souls prosper. 
When we get our soul to prosper and get in line with God's principles, then we can see financial prosperity manifest in our lives. Again, when we get our soul to prosper and we get in line with God's principles, then, then we can see financial prosperity manifest in our lives. I want to share with you some of the things I've learned in my life about prosperity and finances. Now he's going to share with us some of his testimonies. My personal fight with faith. Several years ago, I invested quite a large sum of money in a joint business venture. I had put out a fleece. Now, if you read Judges 6, 37 to 40, you'll see what that means. I won't do much reading today. I'll leave that for you to read. Judges 6, chapter 6, for 37 to 40, that would explain what a fleece is. So I put out a fleece before the Lord about this business deal. Well, all the fleeces turned out just the way I asked, but I really got fleeced. You see, Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, least, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine upon them. Again, in whom the God of this world had blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine upon them. Paul said, Satan is the God of this physical world, and Satan knew the fleece I had put out. Now I have found a better way to find the will of God. Howbeit, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. John 16, 17. That's the Holy Spirit. I had sold a small farm and invested the money in this business. I lost nearly all the original investment plus $25,000 more. This is what this man lost after investing. Through the confusion the enemy caused, I lost faith and turned negative to the, on life. So him losing all his investment, losing $25,000 more, he said, because of this confusion that the enemy caused, I lost faith and turned negative on life. I thought God had done this to me. That was Satan. That was what Satan had put in my mind. After several months, months, sorry, I realized that the negative thoughts in my mind did not agree with the word of God. Then the enemy tried to convince me that I had failed God. And he was mad at me. And that was the reason I had lost my money. Hmm. I know this story sounds familiar to many because it is one of Satan's favorite lies that he uses to bring condemnation and confusion to God's people. Yes, he always tells us, remember the word of God says Satan is the accuser of the brethren. And when something goes wrong in our lives, he tells us, oh, God is mad at you. You did something wrong. Remember, Job? His friends accuse him of sinning. Why are you going through all of this? It's because you have to have sin in your life. And so here he says, the enemy tried to convince him that I had that he had failed God, that God was mad at him, and that was the reason why he's lost his money. That's what the devil told him. Okay, so my confessions ruled. He's saying now, my confessions ruled. Let's listen to what his confessions were. In that confused state of mind, I turned negative. I began to say, it doesn't matter what I do, it won't work out anyway. I was still farming about 800 acres of land at that time. So I turned my attention to the farming operation. I knew that that was one thing I could do well because I had always been successful in farming. But after I had turned negative, let's listen carefully, I would plant cotton and say, well, it doesn't make any difference how deep I plant it. It will probably rain three inches and it won't come up anyway. That was his confession. It did rain and the cotton, the cotton didn't come up, just as he said. I planted again, this time shallow about half inch deep. 
and told almost everyone I saw. Now it will turn off dry and wouldn't rain for three weeks. And it did just what I said. So every time he confessed something, and remember, all these confessions, they are negative. And every time he said it, it happened. The third time I planted that year, I made more negative statements. The more problems showed up, the more negative I became. So here the enemy bringing up all these problems, and he is just feeding into the enemy. The more the problems came up, the more negative he became. This is Satan's cycle. The more problems came up, the more negative became. He said, this is Satan's cycle. The third planting produced about two-thirds of a stand of cotton. I can even now still hear my words. Now, they will probably come an early freeze and kill it before it opens. So he planted it, the third crop. He said, just a little bit came up, thirds of a stand of cotton. That's not much for a farmer. And... So it's there, he saw it coming up in earth, and you know, that he planted, and he said, now they will probably be an early freeze and kill it before it opens. And it did, just as he confessed. For two whole years, I confessed the same thing and got just what I said. I farmed 800 acres those two years and did not make enough money to buy my driver's license. The farming practices that once worked for me did not work. The same ground that once produced bountifully now refused to respond. I was still giving. I still believed Luke 6.23, Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, and shaken together, and running over shall men give into your bosom. So he says here, he was still given to God, given his tithe, given his offering, and he was confessing the word. Given it shall be given to you. Good measure, pressed them, shaking together, running over. And, okay, for with the same measure that he meet, wherewithal, wherewith, with all, it shall be measured to you again. But it was not working for me. Why? Can we say what? Can, do you know why? He said, I prayed, I repented. And begged God to prosper me. But nothing worked. I was still negative. So here we go. We cannot mix the word of God with doubt. We can't. He gave. Right? God said to give. He gave to the Lord. He gave his tithe. He gave his offering. And he confessed the word. But what went wrong here? He was still confessing negative stuff. Even though he did all of that. that neg those negative words override what the good things he did. Like giving his tithe, giving his offering, and confessing the word of God. My confession, he said, I prayed, I repented, I begged God to prosper me. But nothing worked. I was still negative. My confession destroyed my prayer. Mm, let's say that God... Help me that my confession will not destroy my prayer. Again, help me, Lord. My confession will not destroy my prayer. Now, let's say, it. I decree and declare, my confession would be in line with the word of God. It will not destroy my prayer. Because you know what? We're human beings, and we cannot say, well, he did that. Because when things happen in our lives, the natural man comes up most of the times. And so we have to pull ourselves in place, and we have to tell ourselves that's why we need to stay in the word, keep focus. So, he said, my confession destroyed my prayer. I was, I saw failure everywhere I looked. I believed it and confessed it daily. I was a failure. I was at the end of my rope financially. I had just borrowed $100,000 to pay back, to pay my back bills. I was so poor, I couldn't even pay attention. Because it took over his mind. I mean, being in poverty mm, is not good. Having all these deaths, he couldn't think clearly. It just took over his mind. He said, I was so poor, I couldn't pay attention. I would go to church, but I couldn't get anything out of the service because I was worrying about my finances. Then a Baptist man came to my house one day. He had some books with him. I remember thumbling through one of the books and reading, thumbing through one of the books and reading a few paragraphs here and there. The title of the book was Right and Wrong Thinking. That's the title of the book that he was just browsing through by Kenneth Hagen. 
it was difficult. It's sorry. It was different from any book that I, I had ever read. Every paragraph said something and it was straight to the point. I remember to this day one of the first statements I read. People, this is one of the statements, people that think wrong believe wrong and when they believe wrong, they act wrong. Again, people that think wrong believe wrong and when they believe wrong, they act wrong. It went off inside me like a bombshell. It just seemed like someone turned a light on inside me. Hallelujah. The entrance of thy words giveth light. It giveth understanding unto the simple. That's Psalm 119 verse 130. I knew instantly that this was truth. As soon as you read it says, something inside went off like a bombshell. It just seemed like someone turned a light on inside of me. That's what the word of God says. And here is the scripture. Psalm 119, 130 says, The entrance of thy word giveth light. It giveth understanding into the simple truth. That's why we encourage you to stay in the word every day. Because you might be going to a situation you don't know. And as you open the word, the Lord starts revealing things to you. It's light. It shines a light in the darkness. It, shines. it gives us, oh, it's so much. The word is just powerful. So he said, I ordered that book and another one on confession. I began to dig into the word of God to see where I was missing it. I had never heard anyone preach on Mark 11, 23 to 24. For verily I say unto you, that's the scripture, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them. This is the King James Version. That found in, in Mark 11, 23 to 24. I am sure I had read it, but it meant nothing to me. I was, it was not in me. I had no idea you could have what you say. But as I began to prayerfully, he said, as I began to prayerfully study what Jesus said about words, the mouth and prayer, God began to reveal these things to me. So he started off reading and he's confessing it, but he didn't understand. But as he prayerfully said, God, I want you to, you know, he prayerfully went into it. He asked God to help him. He said, Jesus I began to prayerfully study what Jesus said about words, the mouth, and prayer. God began to reveal these things to me. I remember one morning I was praying and I said, Father, I have prayed and it is not working out. God, I'll be praying and I'm working out. How many times do we say, have we said that? I said it before. It's praying, not working out. Okay. He spoke inside my spirit plainly. So he's crying to God, God, I've been praying. Is that working out? And this is what God said to him. What are you doing? <laughs> I said, I am praying. This is child cops. I'm praying, God, I'm praying. God said, no, you're not. You're not praying. You are complaining. <laughs> How many of us could say, ouch? How many times we be complaining to God? You're not praying. God said, you are complaining. Then he said, who told you? It is not working out. So he's confessing now. He got everything right. And because he cannot see it in the natural, he's saying it's not working. And God said, who told you that it's not working out? Mm. Now that shook me. I thought for a minute and then I said, well, I guess the devil said that. You know, because God is saying, who told you? He said, I guess that's what the devil told me. Then he spoke into my spirit some things that totally transformed my life. He said, I would appreciate it if you would quit telling me what the devil said. <laughs> you know, God is so awesome. I like the way he talked to us. So he said, I think I said, so then he said, one of the things God told him, I would appreciate it. Charles, his name is Charles Cops, right? He said to him, Charles, I would appreciate it if you would quit telling me what the devil said. You have been praying for me to prosper you and get the devil off of you. 
I am not the one who is causing your problems. You are under an attack from the evil one, and I can't do anything about it. I'll read this again. This is interesting. God said to him, I would appreciate it if you would quit telling me what the devil said. You have been praying for me to prosper you and get the devil off of you. I am not the one that is causing your problems. You are under an attack of, of the evil one, and I can't do anything about it. Now, when people hear this, they were like, what? I thought he's God. I thought he could fix this. Let's read on. You have bound me by the words of your own mouth. My God. Mm. You know, the word of God said, God does not, we are free will people, free will leaders. God does not go against us. So he cannot work against what we confess. My goodness, my goodness. Let me read this again. He said, you are, you are under an attack of the evil one and I can't do anything about it. If we stop the humanity, what kind of God is this? Why can't God do anything about it? But listen why God said it. He said, you have bound me by the words of your own mouth. And it is not going to get any better until you change your confessions and begin to agree with my word. Mm. I'm going to read that again because it's important. And there's some people that are still going through financial struggles because of their words. Oh, the month coming again. I know. I ain't going to make that payment this month again. I know that I ain't make this payment. If these people would just raise my salary, if they would just give me increase, I ain't going to make it. So here we are confessing. The bill is coming and, and we don't realize what we're saying. And God wants to bless. Remember, God does not only bless us through our jobs. Oh, people get it, get it, get it. Mm. I'm going to read this again. You have bound me by the words of your own mouth and it is not going to get any better until you change your confessions and begin to agree with my word again we have a need this the the the, 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 the paycheck is, is so much lower that it's not enough to pay the bills we will say god here is my paycheck here is my bills i thank you because i'm a tither and a giver and you say my god shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory by christ jesus god i thank you that this bill is paid i thank you all my needs are met and don't worry god is gonna take care of it so he says hey, you are operating in fear and unbelief let's say god help me not to operate in fear and unbelief but to trust you to trust you for every financial need in jesus name you are operating in fear and unbelief you have established the words of the evil one in your Sorry, you have established the words of the evil one in your behalf. By your own mouth, you have released the ability of the enemy. My goodness. Remember, I said to you years ago, the Lord said to me, Lois, be careful what you say. And then he said, you know, you know some movies, when you look at some movies, you see there's somebody there's about to make a decision. And in, in, in the movie, they see like an angel on one shoulder and the devil on one shoulder. He said, that's how it is in real life. The angels of the Lord are there and the, the enemy, the devil has his demons around. And whatever you say, he said, nothing that you say disappears in thin air. It doesn't disappear. He said, whatever you say, if my angels cannot use it to make it happen, if he cannot use it, then the devil is going to make it happen. And that's when I start saying, no, no, I'm not saying I don't have. I'm not saying I'm poor. I'm, that's out of my vocabulary. I told my children, we're not saying that anymore. Because you said, the Lord said, you keep saying, I'm poor. I don't have. He said, the devil is going to send those demons to make things happen in your lives that you keep spending and spending and spending and you will never have. So, Lois, watch your words because nothing just disappears. Even in joking, he said, be careful. I had to really come down on my children when it comes to joking. I said, God said, every idle word is counted. And some people look at you strange, you see. <laughs> because when you have the revelation of what the power of the power of your words, and you try to not say certain things, or when people say certain jokes, you don't laugh, they figure, hmm. What happened to her? She thinks she's holier than thou. It's not being holier than thou. It's knowing that there is power in your words, whether we joke or not. We could curse ourselves, our children. It's people, let's grab a hold of it. And so because of that, I don't have many friends. Uh, so <laughs> glory to God. I don't hang around certain people. 
because if you are all if everything you could be confessing is negative i will encourage you and i will tell you what the word of god says and if you continue to i'm sorry i would not be a part of your group my sister my brother no way jose i'm not going to get those negative stuff over my life because i know what god told me he told me be careful you are going you could bring curses on yourself and your children by your mouth so do not confess i don't have because nothing we say people remember nothing that comes forth from your mouth just disappears some force takes it even the spirit of god and the angels cannot work in anything that's negative. God cannot work. Here's a perfect example. Charles Cap said, God said, you are operating in fear and unbelief. Establish, when you say this, you establish the words of the evil one on your behalf. So you are giving him permission to, to work against you because you said it. You confess it. He said, this, this is what the God Lord said to me. He said, when you confess those words, I have report. The devil can say, hey, you all hear what Lois said? She said it. Go make it happen, devil, demons. You can tell them demons. Lois just said she don't have. So you go use her word. She said it. You make sure she doesn't have. That's what the Lord told me years ago. And here it says, by your own mouth, you have released the ability of the enemy. If you were to do anything about it, I would have to violate my word. If, he said, if I were to do anything about it, I would have to violate my word. And I can't do that. Now, based upon what we say, so shall it be. God can't go against his word. He, 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 you know, we are free will people, and God is not going to force us to do things against our wills, force us to say things against our will. That's not God. Really. He's not a robot master. He doesn't control us like that. We have to say, Lord, I give myself to you. We have to freely give of ourselves to him. I just, I had just gotten enough of his word in me that could talk to me intelligently about the problem. Until then, he had no basis on which to talk to me, for I had cast out his word and quoted the enemy. So he's saying, now he was getting it, he was getting it. Before he didn't understand, he didn't have enough of God's word on him, on the inside of it. He said, now, until then, I had no basis on which to, he had no basis on which to talk to me for I had cast out his word and quoted the enemy. So when we keep quoting the enemy, God, God is waiting on us. He said, okay, let me see when she's going to get it together. I really can't do anything because she's just confessing what the enemy, you know, the enemy's words. So until over a period of the next few months, he spoke many things into my spirit that totally upended my way of thinking. He was in God's presence and God ministered to him. God spoke several things in his spirit and his thinking changed. He said, I am for you. This is what God's saying to Charles Cops, and he's saying this to us today too. I am for you. I want you to prosper, but I want you to do it in a way that will work an eternal value in you. Again, I am for you. I want you to prosper, but I want you to do it in a way that would work an eternal value in you. By using your faith and acting on the word, which is God's word, the power of binding and loosing is not in heaven. The power of binding and loosing, that's not in heaven. Where is it? It is on earth. And if you don't do it, it won't be done. I bind. The Lord gave us authority to bind and loose. We did that confession several times. He said the, 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 the power of binding and loose is not in heaven. It's on earth. We say whatever we bind on earth is bound in heaven. So it has to first be come out from our mouths. We have to do it and then God is going to do it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Then he told me, he said it is on earth. And if you don't do it, it won't be done. Then he told me this. Study and search my word for promises. Yes, people, we cannot do it without the word. Study, study, study. Study and search my word for promises that pertain to you as a believer. Make a list of these promises and confess them aloud daily. Again, for lack of. You put a list. Let's do that. Make a list for lack. Look in the Bible. My God shall supply all my need. And you put it next to that. And you put the scripture reference. And every day you confess that. For sickness, we put, by the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. Healing is a sickness. Healing is a children's bread. So for every situation, you put that there. And you look for the word in God's. You look for God's word. And you confess that word. So God says, look, search, study. And God, you know what? This man has done the studying for us. He's done it for us. It's in this book. That's why I say you guys purchase this book. It takes time to study, but that's the not study. But he, he has it here. The scriptures for healing, the scriptures for um, when you have a need. So he said, 
Study, search my word for promises that pertain to you as a believer. Make a list of these and confess them aloud daily. They will build up your spirit over a period of time. Then when these truths are established in your spirit, they will become true to you. So it will build up. And after a while, man, you be, when the enemy bring things, you just be spitting out that word like that. Mm, mm, the word will be coming up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank you. Oh boy, I've gone over my time. God is powerful. So we will stop here today. So even in our children, parents, even as we are, we have children and you may have brought them up in the things of God and you see that they are going astray. Do not say, oh gosh, I pray for this child. This child will never change. No. The confession should be, remember the word of God says, all my children shall be taught of the Lord and great will be their peace. So you teach them the word and you confess that word. You put your child, Rubens, Daniels, um, Joseph will be taught of the Lord and great will be his peace. You confess the word over your child, regardless of what that child is doing, regardless if he's in the drugs, regardless whatever he's doing. You do not confess what the child is doing, the negative thing. You confess God's word over that child and see God work. Hallelujah. So, Father, we thank you today for your word. Lord, I thank you that we will, that, that for reminding us who we are in you. In power, the power is in your word. The power is in our confession. So help us again, Father, not to confess what we feel or what we see around us. But remember, we are tying your hands when we confess those negative things. We need to only confess your word. Even though we may not believe it at first, we will still confess it. Knowing that your word is truth. Your word is life. There is power in your word. And your word changes things. So help us, Father, that we will remember your word and we will study your word and we will confess your word over every situation in Jesus name amen thank you God thank you God we bless you Lord and so we are going to be singing miracle working God and as you go out today please remember to um, look for an individual a child a teenager give them a compliment because you taking the time to give them that compliment you may never know what um, you have stopped the, 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 the plans that you'll be stopping that the enemy has in that child's life. Hallelujah. Let's sing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory to God. The Lord in the beauty of holiness. For he's a miracle working God. Miracle working God. Miracle working God. Nothing is too difficult, he's the miracle working God. Miracle work, every situation that may seem impossible, you just confess the word, confess the word, and see God is going to work on your behalf. Remember, you would not be in want because God is your Father. Hallelujah, glory to your name. Thank you, Father, for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Thank you, Jesus. I walk in my miracle. I receive my miracle from my supernatural working God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Miracle working God. Miracle working God, nothing is too difficult, he's the miracle working God, miracle working God, yes, yes, wonderful is impossible, he's the miracle working God, Ooh, again, regardless of the time you've been praying and waiting, don't be discouraged. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. And the supernatural power of a miracle working God. I walk. I walk in my miracle. I receive my miracle from the supernatural working God. Thank you, Lord. Sing with me, miracle working God, miracle working God, nothing is impossible, it's a miracle, yes, hallelujah, yes he is, Woo, thank you Lord, 
Yeah, he's a miracle working God. I say miracle work. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, I love this. My God specializes in the impossible. Woo! Whatever financial situation you have that may seem impossible, bring it to God. Yes, miracle God. Woo! Thank you, Lord. <laughs> oh, glory to God. I rejoice, miracle working God. Woo! Nothing, nothing, nothing is too difficult. He's the miracle working God. Hallelujah. Sing with me, your miracle working God. Nothing is too difficult. He's the miracle. Hallelujah. Woo! Yes, he is. Nothing, nothing. He's the miracle working. Hallelujah. Woo. I am a product of the miracle working power of God. As you know, God healed me from lupus and rheumatoid arthritis. One doctor looked at me and said, you couldn't have rheumatoid arthritis. You would have been deformed. And I said, do you know the God that we serve? He said, oh, they did a wrong test or they got the wrong results. But I know the God that I serve. And many times people would want you to think, well, that and right or whatever. But because of God, I'm alive today. God has 54 years old, that to God be the glory. God did it for me. God has done miracles in my life healing where things seem impossible. Financially, I've seen God work miracles. So my brothers and sisters, it works. Let's get into the word, confess the word. And even in situations that may seem difficult or impossible, do not confess the negative like Charles Cap said. He was giving, he was tithing, he was confessing the word of God, but he didn't stop there. He was also confessing negative things over his situation. And so with all his giving and with all his confessing of the word of God, those negative things that he confessed over his crop took preeminence over it. It ruled and God could not work on his behalf. So let us stick to one thing, stick to the word of God, stick to positive confessions, even though it may not look like it's going to happen. Don't say it, keep it in your mind. Just confess the word of God, and then we are releasing, we're giving God the power to work in our situation, retiring his hands when we confess those doubts and negatives. So I hope you're blessed today. I have been encouraged. Go have a great day. Enjoy the blessings of the Lord. Confess. Let's say today, this is the day God has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I will have a great day. I will accomplish the plan for God of my, the plan of God on my life today in Jesus' name. Thank you all for joining us. Be blessed and have a great day. See you tomorrow at 6.30 a.m. Take care. Bye.